Welcome to a special edition of BSC TV On Player, featuring an exclusive interview with former Claret Ted McMinn, back at Turf Moor for Saturday's game against Derby County, and with golden memories of 1994. <laughs> Well, I'm joined here on Clarence Plato by a very special guest. Ted McMinn's back for the day. Ted, it's fantastic to see you. Yeah, well, it's took 14 and a half years to, to, to come back, really. And um, Veronica's tried everything to get me up here. And there's always been one way or another, or a health problem, or my work, or whatever. And um, I'm delighted to come back here and um, to my two old clubs, really. Derby, who they're playing today, and um, Burnley, a club that I hold great memories with. I think two words always spring to mind when we think of Ted McMinn and it's cult hero. Everybody always has great fond memories of Ted McMinn and of course 1994 was such a big year for us. Yeah, I'm not so sure about the cult hero thing. Um, I wasn't at the club. Trust me, I'm a fan. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but the other players that were mentioned, I think, when it was on the BBC in the poll and things like that, you know, there's, 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 there's players that, to me, were, were, were heroes when, when I was here and even after, like, I'd left and things like that. But, to come back here and be recognised 14 and a half years after you've been, it, it, it's great. But I have always had fond memories of, of Burnley anyway, so it's, it's just great to come back and see some old faces again. I'm sure it is. Ian Britton, of course, scored the goal in 87 that kept us up. He's never had to buy a drink in Burnley again. You're probably not far behind that, you know. Well, I'll, um, my lad's actually coming down from Glasgow today, so I think I might, he might be walking about. <laughs> He's got a men's shirt on, so <laughs> yeah. I think he might be trying that one, but uh, he'll have to borrow my leg, so... <laughs> It could be a problem there, but um, no, it, the, the final, like you're saying, the, the, the 94 final never goes away. And like I've said before, it, it's so strange what, what what way both clubs have went. One went one ones went up the way, and one went uh, down the way, and it's um, great to see actually. A crescendo of noise as the gladiators enter this Wembley Stadium for this Ensley League playoff final. 12 points separated these two teams at the end of the season. And all that now counts for nothing as they face each other on equal terms to see who is to play ends the league Division 1 football next season. Burnley will have to organise rather quickly as we have five players in that. In fact, a goal on four minutes to stop or take the lead. That free kick in short. Well, they're just not really getting hold of the loose ball in the midfield at the moment. Just break off. Ayers, Jinky run at the edge of that penalty area. Has the chance gone? A great goal by David Ayers. A superb run right along the edge of that Stopper County penalty area. Davis sweeping ball finds Parkinson. Farrell right up with his Burnley attack. Deary chip in again. Carr finds maybe a chance for Parkinson. And it's in the net. I think you seem to be, I was, there, I was there that day in the crowd, and you seem to be at the, at the centre point of everything that happened that day, right from the opening minutes when, of course, the Stockport player was sent off. Yeah, well, the, the reason he got sent off for spitting, I mean, to me, I don't even know if the lad ever played again. It's one thing I oh, never, no. ever knew if he ever played again. I never even looked for his name. But when he, when he got sent off, people said that I got him sent off, but to me, in, in your book, if that happens, it's, it's, no, it's not acceptable. Yes. And it, that's no me getting somebody sent off. Yeah, my reaction, but... How, how many people at 100 would react exactly the same way? Well, there's a great picture, of course, of you pointing and remember saying that you can't do that. And yeah. I remember it well. Well, who's the referee? He was a school teacher. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And he was, he was, he seen it, and he was, he was only feet away. And the second one, it was just a matter of they lost their head and they started kicking whoever moved. Um, and I'd probably, I would, they were kicking me because I would, couldn't move fast enough. So, but um, what does that rank in your, in your sort of career? Ted? Oh, up there. I mean, winning leagues at, at Rangers or league cups at Rangers, winning the playoffs. But, the, but the, the strangest thing with that game, that isn't my biggest memory for Burnley. The biggest memory for me was the Plymouth away game. Yeah. The 3-1 the, the, the yeah. game down there. Only because what happened when we went down there and their chairman had said, we've booked all the buses, we need more buses for the, the, the playoff game. Yeah. And that hurt every, every Burnley player. Jimmy Mullen put it up on the board and said, every one of you read that before you get in that pitch. That's it, might be Dalton who will swing the ball in. Towards Marshall, who gets a flick on, a chance for the shot now. They're coming a long way for that one. Going again. Oh, he's knocking it forward. Francis getting away from Comin. Nichols has had to come off his line. John Francis! And Francis makes it one all. 
Well, he'd been threatening on a couple of occasions to get past that Argyle defence. Not again. Obviously the subject of some close attention. Francis again bringing the ball away, looking to get through that gap in the middle, and he might get the shot in here. And he does, and John Francis makes it 2-0. And what is the Argyle defence doing, you wonder? Well, danger here. Joyce playing it wide for McMinn. Only suddenly have three players in the box. As McMinn looks for space to get the cross in. Gets a shot in instead, comes off Nichols. And that surely is good night for Plymouth Argyle. And I'll never forget the atmosphere and the Burnley fans behind the goals, a cold night, and no being able to go out and celebrate to the fans because they, until the ground was empty, but the Burnley fans stayed there. And then, of course, we never came back up the road that night. We, um, we, we, the chairman said, no, we're staying in Plymouth tonight. But I think we stayed in the moat house, booked all the rooms and we stayed there. And, and there, was, there was probably about six years still <laughs> celebrating when people were having their breakfast. Hey, listen, I was there that night as well and I don't think I got back till about three days afterwards. It seemed that way anyway. Well, it was, it, again, it was because it, we were under, we, got, we came here and we drew it on the Neil Sunday, Neil. never forget. Yeah. And the lad who kicked the lumps out of me, he used to live with me, Mark Patterson. And of course, Peter Shelton was the manager. Mm. But that game, when we, when we drew here, everybody, everybody thought, that's it, they blew it. They, they needed to get a lead here. But to go down there, they finished third, and to, to, to kick them in the, their own backyard was a great achievement. But um, it was great to get to Wembley and, and, and play in a, in a final and all. Though. And talking of Wembley, we've obviously had sad news recently about a former teammate of yours, and of course the Wembley winner that day, Gary Parkinson, fighting back, we understand, in hospital from a, from a terrible illness. But I know you were devastated when you heard the news. Yeah, I was. And, but, I mean, I was lucky enough. Parky, me and Parky had a great understanding. When we played together, he knew when to give me the ball, and then he knew not to run by me. He would say, there you go, Ted, you've got the ball, you do your job now. And, and it, when he went flying by me, I knew exactly when to give him the ball. Fantastic player to play with. And we're both towards the end of our careers, really. I was towards the end of mine, really. I think Parky went on after he left Burnley. But he was a, he was a player that... He was a great player to play with. And I was lucky enough to play here with Parky. And we kept in touch with the, with the BBC and things like that. We used to bang into each other. Probably at Preston or something like that. He was working for, I think, Radio Lancaster. Yeah, yeah. And we banged in and... Um, it's good to hear that he's improving, and um, my thoughts go with him and his family. I think we echo that from the club. And finally, Ted, you've not not without your own problems too. How are you health-wise? Well, this, it's been just over five years now. It's no growing back yet, my legs. So that's a bit <laughs> disappointing. But um, I, th I must be taking the wrong tablets. But um, it's five years, um, and and and, and, and I will probably not said anything. But when it, when I had the operation, the Burnley fans had fantastic emails and uh, get well messages from thousands of Burnley fans. There was an odd one from Stockport that, you know, what, what's he got? Imagine. But, but that, that's, that's, that's just another thing in life. But um, no, things are good. And then, especially coming back here, you know what I mean? Because as soon as you drive into the car park, which used to be the players' car park, now we don't in case the players, but when you drive in there, that's the buzz that you used to get, you know, parking your car up and then walking another 50 yards along mm. the long tunnel to the dressing rooms. Um, I don't know if they've changed any of the dressing rooms. Not but much. They probably, I wonder if they've replaced the two tiles that we're always missing in the showers. We've got rid of the bath, though. The bath's gone. Oh, I like the bath. I like the bath. I'm not so sure that because it was last thing I liked the bath because it, it was a bit dirty at the time I used to get in it. Because, but that pitch out there used to be a bowling green. I mean, it still looks a fantastic pitch to play on. And that was one of the reasons that I probably played here and played quite well because the pitch was always fantastic. And again, it, the Burnley fans were fantastic. Jimmy Mullen was fantastic. I mean, I'll never forget Jimmy for bringing me here. Uh, a lot of people thought you, you're bringing somebody that's washed up and had a bad knee injury and things like that. But to come here and win the playoffs, yeah, we got relegated the next season. But by that time, I think my my best days had gone anyway. And that was well, I, was, I went to Australia after that. Mm. And, but this was my last professional club, which was fantastic to be here. Well, listen, it's been fantastic to see you again. Don't leave it so long next time. Come back and see us again. Thanks very much. Thanks, yeah, thanks for joining. Yeah. That's all from BSC TV this week. Join us soon for more behind the scenes at Turf Moor.